Trachoma is a devastating disease. Trachoma is a disease of poverty. So the trachoma affects the most impoverished of the poor even. The International Trachoma Initiative will be turning 20. And it's time to look back and reflect on the enormous progress. The achievement in this first 20 years has been notably the proof of the fact that blinding trachoma can be eliminated or eradicated from the entire world. When you go out into the field and you see the elders of the village who are already blind, who didn't benefit from the program, struggling, and then you see these amazing little children and their eyes are clear and they're bright and their smiles are beautiful and they're well poised for a fulfilling and healthy life where they can make a living for their families. It really looks as if we will achieve our goal and we will consign this miserable disease to the uh, garbage of history. I think 20 years ago, no one could have imagined we would be here today. No one. How do we get there? In part, it was due to people like Dr. Joe Cook, who helped develop the safe strategy that the components of surgery and drug treatment and facial cleaning and environmental cleanliness, put those elements together and stay the course, things will change. Developing that strategy was an absolutely seminal uh, contribution. Well, the creation of ITI came about because of the research that the Edna McConnell Clark Foundation was supporting that led to the development of the SAFE strategy. We made contact with Pfizer when they had azithromycin in clinical trials. Within the company, there was a real interest in supporting this program. And that led in very swift succession to the formation of um, the World Health Organization Alliance for the Elimination of Trachoma, a World Health Assembly resolution, which is really important because it's the political platform that all the countries sign up for to um, eliminate the disease in their own territories. And that was back in 1998. At the beginning, uh, there was no very clear um, targets, actually, except saying that uh, we should eliminate blinding trachoma. Uh, there was no consensus on what kind of level of prevalence we should be uh, targeting. Elimination of blinding trachoma, it's actually uh, uh, much more than just getting rid of this infectious disease. It's, it's about improving the life of the people. Because of few people who are very, very committed 20, 25 years ago, because at that time it became very clear that uh, a donation of azithromycin would make a big, big difference. You have to understand that the collaboration begins with Pfizer. Uh, our first shipments were from their historic brick factory in Brooklyn to Morocco. But the continuing work that they have done with the ITI, it's not easy. Now how they manage this is truly extraordinary. I think that's what we'll see more of in global health, that people are seeing the big picture. That, I mean, this is such an important development in global health, getting the corporations involved. We didn't see 30 years ago much of what was going to happen in global health. And one of the things we certainly didn't see, corporations actually becoming strong foundations in global health. Blindness, we can't even imagine what blindness is like in Africa. Once you go blind, you don't have much of a life expectancy. And now we have Pfizer giving uh, Zithromax. It is possible to change what happens and a truly new approach to global health. Pfizer has donated about over 700 million doses of Zithromax. That partnership between and generosity of uh, Pfizer to the entire ITI effort has been a, a very crucial and beneficial factor. 
Well, Pfizer started thinking about um, the global need that they could partner with other groups in, in making azithromycin and Zithromax available for control of trachoma and try to work towards the elimination of blinding trachoma. Pfizer was able to get into a number of, of countries, uh, a number of endemic districts, worked carefully with the Carter Center early on in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the most affected country in the world with trachoma. About 10 or 12 years ago, literally up to 19 out of 20 kids had signs of active disease if you were to avert the, the eyelid and have a look for clinical signs. 19 out of 20. Five or six times higher than anywhere we'd ever seen in the world. In 2005, President Carter and Joe Fedjko, along with Paul Emerson, visited Amhara, Ethiopia. That visit, it changed the global program. It made ITI, ITI. It made the global program grow at rates that none of us could have anticipated. We're here on the shore of Lake Tana, which is in the middle of the Amhara regional state in Ethiopia. Very close to where we are now was where the commitment by then um, Senior Vice President of Pfizer, Joe Fedjko, agreed to increase the donation from a global 35 million doses of Zithromax to over 50 million to this state alone. That brave and forward-thinking decision was made in response that that drug was going to be used and taken to the mouths of those who need it. And not on a one-off basis, but on an annual basis until the job was done. Pfizer could only take it so far. You know, this is, it still is a, a research-based pharmaceutical company and it was not an NGO. This program had to be taken over by, by someone who could take it to scale and really um, develop it further. It was Pfizer that had the feeling that ITI needed a new partner. What we suggested was that we had strengths in forming coalitions, in partnering. So we said we would bring to the table experience and skills in forming coalitions and partnering. I think for Pfizer and the task force, one of the things that was really important about the task force's contribution for us was that they really brought other players to the table and really at that point were able to take the program to scale. And I think that could be very much attributed to Mark Rosenberg's leadership. And among many things that Mark did to make the task force an instrument for impact on health around the world, I would say his undying persistence <laughs> to bring ITI into the task force is one of his great accomplishments and I think not many people thought that could be possible. The task force works in collaboration with international NGOs, governments and other implementing partners. Although we focus on one particular aspect, um, in this case trachoma, the whole program of trachoma control is part of the development process. Through the program, families are um, rejuvenated. Kids can go back to school, people are more productive. M more productive farmers have better nutrition. Better nutrition, they're better able to stave off other infectious diseases. People just do better. They have more income coming in. The quality of life really comes up. This is a lifetime opportunity. This is a big program that has actually involved many, many um, uh, partners to make sure that this program is a success. We also collaborate with the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust that provided the financing. Site Savers has also been coordinating this program because this is a very massive program. Besides that, we have also worked with AMREF, War Aid, and all those partners. As you see, many people are here coming to take the drug. That has come about because of the collaboration of all these partners to see these children being treated so that the trachoma is out of their lives. 
and then you would actually be assured of a bright future for them. And it's quite delighting to see the children taking the drug so that they can be free of trachoma. Now my village is free from trachoma. I can look at this beautiful daughter and I'm really excited to see that they are not really suffering the consequences of trachoma as uh, my classmates used to really suffer. So this gives me a lot of satisfaction and gratification in what I'm doing. Some of the lessons that have been learned from the very successful programs, one of them th has been the ownership and the leadership by the government. With an immense and committed partnership by different stakeholders. The work with ITI in um, eliminating blinding trachoma in countries like Malawi is something that we value. Uh, the partnership is something that we think is having a real impact. From the very inception of this, it has really been owned by Malawians and is what has really made this truly a success today. But what I think is absolutely notable is the response from the communities making sure that we deal with trachoma as a public health problem in Malawi. I think this has all been achieved because of the partnership and the collaboration and of course uh, ITI with their support has, has made this possible. What we're looking at here is actually a fabulous innovation. The first generation of household latrines were built away from the house and they really suffered during the heavy rain. They were made with impermanent structures and they were collapsing left, right and centre. The innovation here is that they've built the, um, the latrines against the house using the same construction materials of the house. So the latrine should last as long as the house. They've even invested money in using a tin roof in this case. This child will be growing up not knowing about open defecation. This will be the new normal for her. And can you also see how clean she is and how bright her eyes are? This is exactly what, uh, what we're aiming for with the sanitation program. She's free of flies. We're sitting right outside the latrine. There's no odor. We're not surrounded by flies. You know, this is development. I think that the scale and magnitude of the problem of trachoma is really extraordinary. And so when you see the order of magnitude, you realize how many people have to be at the table. And when you bring all of the ministries together for our annual meeting uh, with the World Health Organization, you see what it takes to come together to eliminate this disease, and it is extraordinary. It is a logistical feat um, of an order of magnitude that I have rarely seen, and I'm so grateful for all of our partners who participate every day to make that happen. It's an amazing experience to see this little pink pill make its way through the manufacturing process all the way out to literally the end of the road. When you go see the program, that's where the magic happens. It's truly magical to be able to see how it all comes together. I never imagined that in this lifetime we'd be talking about trachoma elimination in Malawi. The scale of this global program is something that someone cannot imagine. For the case of Malawi, where just nine years ago, we were talking about 17 million people at risk of trachoma, to today, where we're saying that trachoma is just confined in some pockets. This is extreme. Logistically, having a meeting here in Mangochi, five hours drive from the nearest airport, I mean, it's not easy. Some of our delegates are coming uh, two days of travel, 48 hours, in order to get here. 
but it's really worth it because trachoma is a disease that's at the end of the road. Uh, this meeting in Malawi has been at the right time in the right place. This trachoma expert committee, which is now under, undertaking its uh, 17th session, is really a collection of outstanding intellectuals, academicians, researchers in the field. So they are bringing together you know, their expertise to guide the program, to implement the program in the right direction. Through our partnership with the USAID, the US government funding for trachoma elimination, uh, we have a strong obligation to make sure that the money is managed efficiently and over the years we've done a lot of the baseline mapping to survey and see where um, interventions were needed. As a tech member, I'm extremely grateful to ITI, the team and the staff for the hard work that they do in compiling the data from the countries to make sure that we're using the best evidence possible to make good decisions about the generous donation of Zithromax. This program has probably the best data of any large-scale uh, disease elimination program. Uh, this is going to be one of those programs, I would say, is studied by others in the future to say, can we emulate this? How did they do this so well? This is a program where, uh, from the very beginning, uh, accurate, transparent use of data uh, to drive to end results um, has shown that this works. ITI is a leader in that way. One of the things that is most amazing for me is that the Pfizer donation has catalyzed the implementation of the program and because of the availability of the drug and because the way the drug is managed that has encouraged donors and that has encouraged the programs and between us we've empowered the national programs to stop thinking about small scale and start thinking about national programs and that has in turn mobilized tens of thousands of volunteers empowering the countries themselves and then taking on this cascade training involving tens of thousands of volunteers reaching a hundred million individuals. It's absolutely fantastic. My name is Ruth Chesa. I have three sisters, a mom and dad. I like the puzzles and uh, my sister and my parents help me to do it. Yeah, I tell others about hygiene and how the disease of trachoma is dangerous. I tell them what I learned at school about trachoma. Yes, I'm very proud because it, it, it appears that she's not selfish. She just, she just she, she don't keep the message herself. She spread the message so that to make sure that more people have been saved from Trakom. That's it. That I'm very proud. What a privilege it is to be in this golden age in public health, 20 years into the program. We had the Minister of Health of Malawi and senior people from a number of organizations that between them can mobilize millions of dollars of implementation funds and hundreds of millions of dollars of donated drug. That is juxtaposed with the real heroes in the villages like little Ruth, standard eight, leaving primary school. She's already animated. She's already dynamic before she even goes to the secondary school. She's teaching her peers at school. She's actually leading the peers in their hygiene promotion, in addition to training her own parents and the elders in her village. And the combination of the Minister of Health and then 
the kids in the village, it's such a privilege to be able to work with all of these cadres of people delivering these programs.